Hey everybody, I wanted to explore a little bit more about the uh, timeline of the world of Greyhawk. Uh, specifically, I want to see if we can compare the fall of Rome to the Twin Cataclysms, today on Greyhawk Ragnar. Okay, so... My idea here is, and I'm riffing more on the ancient civilization theme that we've been talking about, and uh, maybe a little bit into the human uh, ethnicity things that we talked about a few months ago, um, that my idea is that the twin cataclysms, the Reign of Colorless Fire and the Invoked Devastation, which destroyed the Sulis, uh, Sulois Imperium and the Baclunish Empire, respectively, that those events have as much of a... Uh, a, a impact on the setting of the world of Greyhawk as the fall of Rome did to the setting of Europe. And by this I mean the fall of Rome was really culturally traumatic uh, to, to the European civilization in a way that had never been seen before. It was the, uh, the defining moment of Western civilization for a thousand years or more. Um, the, uh, the, the title of being the heir to the Roman Empire was very, very sought after. Um, we had Charlemagne, we had the Holy Roman Empire, um, we had Napoleon uh, taking you know, the, 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 the Roman Empire in the West cast a very, very long shadow. Um, it was seen as a golden age that was lost. Um, we see this in classical education and, and, and the, the way that uh, class classical philosophers like Aristotle were put up on pedestals um, and, and revered in a way that they really weren't even in their own times. Um, and we have, I think we could have a similar situation in the Flaness where we have the the idea that the invoked devastation and the reign of colorless fire really kicked off modern civilization in the Flaness, uh, where we have the great kingdom and we have the invasions of the Iridians and the Sul, um, and and uh, they they contending against the the Flan Flanay people who were already in the Flaness, um, and it, it's it's a remarkable. Um, juxtaposition of events that I don't think has really been explored a lot in the, in the sense that we don't really get the impression, except in the case of the Scarlet Brotherhood, um, that people are pining for the restoration of the Sul, um, uh, Sulois Imperium um, because it has a very bad reputation uh, because of the way that the modern Sul people act in a, in a great uh, deal of the of the time, um, but the Iridians, um, whom I compare to the Germanic tribes coming into the Roman Empire, crossing the frontier. Um, in this case, it's the opposite. You know, they're they're being used as mercenaries and so forth um, by the uh, Sul and the Baclunish, along with humanoids. Um, and it's during the time of the war that they're kind of pushed out uh, into the Flaness. And then they're followed by the by the Sul uh, after the Reign of Colorless Fire destroys the Imperium. So it's it's a neat uh, inversion almost of the of the trope, and um, and I think it works though uh, in in the sense that we have this. There was a uh, a more advanced age in the past, and people are trying to recover perhaps the best parts of that in terms of magical technology and regular technology. Um, you know, nobody. Outs again, no, outside of the um, the, uh, the, uh, the the Scarlet Brotherhood, is really looking to reestablish Suloy's dominance over the the, the continent. Um, but I think that you could paint a situation where they do pine for that sort of overarching. Um, uh, uh, regulation if if you know what i mean this overarching idea that there is order to be had and you had that with the great kingdom the the great kingdom of Erdi uh controlled vast swaths of territory <clears throat> past the the near dive and 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 so forth so they they had that in a large extent but that was eroded over the years um as as more and more territories broke off because the ruling uh House, the ruling houses of the of the kingdom uh, became more and more decadent and evil. So, you know, we have this working on several different levels. In fact, you could say that the great kingdom was, in fact, trying to emulate the uh, the the, ban the, the vanished Sul uh, Sul Empire. Um, 
And if we look at the timeline, the timeline actually works out well too. The, the accepted date for the fall of Rome is 476. Um, that's when the last Western Roman Emperor, Romulus Augustulus, was overthrown. Uh, the, the sack of Rome by the Visigoths happened about 66 years earlier than that. Um, so basically, uh, 476 is a good is a good year. That you know that's that works fine. Um, the dual cataclysms in Greyhawk happened 997 years before the current year, I'm, and I'm going with common year 576 as as the current year. Um, so about a thousand years have passed since that happened, and then the the world of Greyhawk, the guide to the world of Greyhawk, was published. If we look at the levels of technology that we see in the Flaness, it works out really well uh, along that 1,000 year mark idea. So, you know, in, in the Flaness, we know we have windmills, we have clockworks, we have paper, we have sheeted glass, we have reciprocating saws. Um, we don't quite have printing presses. Um, that's kind of iffy, and it's, it, you know, you see some references to this in, uh, in a couple of places and there are you know there and it's hinted at that they don't exist in other places um, we have plate armor um, which started happening in the 14th century um, you know plated you know full plate and um, you know so all of that technology is consistent with things that happened within a thousand years of the fall of Rome and that gives us our benchmark, because if those technologies could evolve in that span of time in the real world, we can assume that they could evolve in that same span of time in the Flaness. So that gives us a great, uh, a, a great pin to put into the time. Uh, we're about a thousand years past the dual cataclysms, and we have all of these technologies that we had in Europe a thousand years after the fall of Rome. So I kind of like the, uh, the idea of the symmetry there, how that works. Um, you know, and uh, I just, I really like the idea of this looking backwards for glory um, on a historical level. I think it adds a lot of pathos to, this, to the setting as a whole. Um, I honestly can't imagine that the, uh, the timing of that, the, the, the thousand years before the, the Great Cataclysm and the present day, um, is, a, is entirely a, uh, a coincidence. I, I would like to think that uh, when Gary Gygax was writing it, he had that in the back of his mind, that uh, you know, the fall of these great empires is the same as the fall of Rome, and you know, that was kind of the benchmark. I've got absolutely no evidence of that, um, but it's a nice, it's a nice uh, thing to imagine that he was uh, thinking that far ahead. Um, anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on this. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, do you do you agree with my um, my uh, comparing the fall of Rome to the fall of the Sul and the Baklunish? Um, you know, uh, do you think that's something that you could use uh, as like an, a theme in your own campaign? Uh, please let me know below in the comments. And if you like this video, please remember to hit the bell, like the video, subscribe, uh, go to the Patreon, buy something on the web store, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, if I don't crank out another video uh, in the next couple of days, I wanted to wish everybody who uh, celebrates it a Merry Christmas. And um, I will see you before the new year. Have a great day.